I'm going to show you how to create nice graphics like this of your ECG from the ECG recording that you make of your own body. So the first thing it will do is we'll get this WAV file here. This is the WAV file recorded from the sound, co sound card. It's about an hour long and it has a pretty large file size. I also have my ecg.py python script which is available at swharden.com. The first thing I'll do is open up Gold Wave, and we can start performing modifications on our hour-long sound file. I already performed a full-time analysis of this full hour of audio. Now I want to do a short term, maybe just five minutes or so. So I'll get a small region, I'll trim it, and then I'll get just five minutes of it. Actually, ten minutes is good. This, this length here is fine. Um, I'll trim it down to ten minutes just to be easy. Now, the first thing I want to do is a band pass filter. So I will, actually I take that back. The first thing I want to do is save it as a raw sound file and change its sampling rate to 1000 hertz. That's 1000 data points a second. Save it there. Yes, I want to update the window with the new sound format. And I will apply a filter, low, low pass filter. I'll filter at mm, 20 hertz. And then that made everything pretty quiet. <laughs> so I have to change the volume. I'll maximize the volume. Might have to do this two or three times. There we go, that's getting better. Now that I can see it, you can actually see the little heartbeats there. I can go to edit, now, effect, volume, auto gain. And this will maximize the volume. This will maximize the volume of all of these points. So now you can see all these individual heartbeats. Pretty cool. So I will save it. Now that it's saved, I can go ahead and close it. Um, and I have to update my ECG script to accommodate the new file name. So I'll scroll down and I'll make sure that this F name matches this here, which right now it does. I'll also make sure that this line and this line are both uncommented, that they don't have a pound sign before it. And then I can just double click here. The first thing that will pop up is a little demonstration of the actual ECG trace. I can zoom in on a region and you can see all of these heartbeats. Um, just make sure that every heartbeat is labeled with a green dot. And don't worry about double beats. Those double beats occur because sometimes you have two quick beats in a row, but the software will eliminate them later on. So I'll close that, and it will go through and make some of my plots. This is an RRI deviation histogram. Pretty much this uh, is a way to demonstrate how common R to R intervals are of certain lengths. For example, this little peak here says that about 27 out of all of our heartbeats that we analyzed are about uh, 0.78 milliseconds apart from each other. So that's cool. You usually have two peaks. You have a larger peak and a smaller peak. So you have a center peak, a slow peak where the heart slows down a little bit, and a, another peak where the heart speeds up a little bit. It gets kind of complicated if you get into it. Um, our beat intervals are pretty much just our R to R interval in milliseconds. It's pretty much the inverse of heart rate. We have a Poincare plot. This is the same thing as our R to R intervals, but they're graphed on an axis with one interval compared to the next consecutive interval. If the heart were beating perfectly normal, well not normal, if it were beating at exactly the same speed constantly, there would be a row of dots in a linear line in this direction. Deviation from that line represents heart rate variability from one beat to the next. So this is the power spectrum density plot, and we have two of these. This is the raw power spectrum plot, and this is the same data, but it's multiplied at every data point by its frequency. So it kind of normalizes it out a little bit. Uh, different peaks here represent different branches of the autonomic nervous system, controlling and changing heart rate. And uh, it gets pretty complicated, so in order to understand it, you have to read up on it a little bit. I can't really describe it here in a few minutes. And this is our graph of heart rate over the 10 minutes that we recorded. And as you can see, just sitting in front of my computer playing a video game, my heart rate is, my heart rate is constantly changing. And that's something cool about making your own ECG. You can really start to learn a lot about how plastic your heart really is and how it really 
does a good job at modulating its output in response to body needs. So, there you go. That should do it for you. Oh, one more thing. At the very end, when you push enter, your new folder has a lot of PNG files in there, so you can share your heart rate information with your friends, post them on your website, and, uh, and bore some people out there. So, good luck.